Hey everybody, it's Charles with the Barbershop Group Podcast. Glad to be back with you all on air. I've got Dr. Steve Poulter, the author of The Shame Factor, Heal Your Deepest Fears and Set Yourself Free on with us. Make sure that you go into the show notes uh, to purchase um, the, the book. And uh, you can also uh, purchase that book right on the uh, the new website. If you guys have not seen the new website, make sure that you go to the show notes and check out the new website as well, where uh, you can view our our um, videos right on there. You don't even have to go to YouTube anymore. And uh, you can also listen to the podcast on there as well. So the new website for you guys is TBG Men, okay? TBGmen.com, the barbershop group, barbershop group men.com. But for you guys, it's really easy. TBGmen.com. And uh, you can check everything out there. And we're hopefully going to get the articles that we yes. uh, we share on the uh, on the website as well. Uh, once we figure out how to load all of them, uh, then you guys will see that there's a lot of information that we put out there that we just can't share on social media all the time. So just, you know, make sure you're following yeah. uh, tbgmen.com. OK, so guys, today we're going to talk some more about self-esteem. Uh, just what Big is one, it? Charles? Yeah. yeah. Doc, what is it? Um, what is what, it? what is self-esteem? Well, doc? Charles, I get asked that question. I don't know, every day, maybe twice a day yeah. by men. Mm -hmm. Self-esteem is how you feel about yourself. It's mm -hmm. kind of like carrying your wallet around. What's in your wallet? Okay. It's like, what picture of yourself do you carry? Yeah. Is it one from gotcha. elementary school, mm -hmm. middle school, college, mm -hmm. or is it present? Got it. Self-esteem is that carrying collateral we mm -hmm. take with us everywhere we go. And that's why yeah. it's so hard for me to talk about it. Okay. Yeah. Because what, and yeah, does what it, it? Yeah. Does does it does it fluctuate? Does it does it go up and down? Or you know, if you're, yeah. Does it expand and 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 contract? <laughs> what, yeah, exactly. What, is, what, is, what does what does it do? <laughs> you know, it's it's not <laughs> static. It's not um. It's not fixed. It's not a okay. brick. It's a fluid process. Mm -hmm. And someone says, "Well, I have low self esteem," and yeah. I. Say, well, what's low self-esteem mean? Well, I don't feel good about myself. Mm -hmm. What what don't you feel good about? And we start walking it back. And it goes back to maybe not feeling like they got someone's approval mm -hmm. or they don't they can't accept parts of themselves they feel defective on. Yeah. But they carry it. Self-esteem is what we carry about ourselves, Charles. Yeah. So now let's talk about there, there's like static self-esteem and then there's there's the fluctuating part because we asked you about the fluctuating yeah. part so mm -hmm. so isn't it true that there's a there's one part of self-esteem that it's pretty pretty standard but the, the, yeah. the other part goes it, it it's temporary or or it's impacted by external things right correct you know what you can say the static uh, the regular the fixed self-esteem is like the house and the mm -hmm. fluid is the air temperature inside the house got you I understand. Okay. You know, okay. So it, it, it's the air temperature. The air temperature. Have. Okay. Got it. So if I'm in school and I get a bad grade on a test that could temporarily impact my self-esteem, right? Yeah. Yeah. Turn you it know, way down. Break up with a girlfriend, get turned down mm -hmm. by somebody that, that, that's just, that, that causes yeah. that decrease or that, that contracting Const yep. that constraint. However, however, uh, typically what you see doc is that it, it recovers. Is that, is that right? Correct. Self-esteem okay. is yeah, absolutely. It recovers. Mm -hmm. It can evolve. You can turn the temperature up. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be freezing Yeah. where you feel like you can't move or survive. Right. Okay. Right. And that's, that's somebody that has a, just a, a good self-esteem. Correct. Um, and Charles, uh -huh. every, every man has a thermostat in his heart metaphorically. Yeah. You got to use it. Got you. Just got you. You got to use it. Uh -huh. You got to turn it on and turn yeah. it up sometime. Turn it up doesn't mean you have an, a chip on your shoulder. But right. Like, you, right. You, know, you can sit, you can apologize to somebody when you know you, you took their head off verbally. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. Or, or yeah, something yeah. That thermostat, Charles, that's our job as men to install in our children. Okay. If they get a thermostat and know how to use it, Charles, their mm -hmm. self-esteem is good. It's going to flow. So you're talking about a, their resiliency again then in, in yes. this case. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And persistence. It's like your son getting his pilot's license. Mm -hmm. That's a thermostat, man. That's up and down. Yeah. Literally, the emotions with it. 
Right. But yeah, he no, was no able doubt. to stay, keep it stable to get it done. Right. Absolutely. And we're, we're moving him up to the next plane now, too. So we told him this summer, hey, awesome. man, you know what? It's time to move on to, to, the, to the, next, uh, the next aircraft. So be ready for it. So, guys, you are listening to uh, yeah. Dr. Poulter, the author of The Shame Factor, Heal Your Deepest Fears and Set Yourself Free. Uh, we're talking about uh, self-esteem and we'll be right back after the break. Hey, guys, we're back and we're talking about poor versus healthy self-esteem now with the author of The Shame Factor, Dr. Poulter. If you guys haven't picked up that book again, I'm telling you, go to the show notes and click on the link so you can purchase the book. If you're on the website, look down, you will find the link to purchase the yes. book right there on the website. Uh, it's a very handy tool for you. You know, Doc, um, a lot of people hear about self-esteem, uh, but they don't yeah. really needle into it. So there's a difference between poor uh, and healthy self-esteem. We kind of alluded to that before, uh, but people with poor self-esteem, they often rely on how they're doing in the present to determine how they feel about themselves. But that's kind of an error, right? Correct. Do you know, Charles, secondly, poor self-esteem is based on what's going outside your mm -hmm. life and yeah. letting that dictate what's inside of you. I see. You know, okay. the old statement is like taping sandwiches to your arm and wondering why you're still hungry. <laughs> I got it. Got it. I'm yeah, quoting Wayne yeah. Dyer. Okay. Yep, but yep. that's the truth. That's yeah. low poor self-esteem is you and I are looking externally, not in here. Uh, so, so it's, I'm, I'm not looking at how I view myself. I'm focusing on the compliments that I get from my friends. Right. right. Or the how they view me, uh, how they view me. Uh -huh. But doc, right. is it that's, isn't that so common? I mean, come on. We Charles, live in an Instagram world. Isn't that coming? <laughs> yes, it is. But, Let's go domino number one. It's got to start uh -huh. with you looking outside first. Yeah, I hear you. It can't let you. it can't start with them looking at you. Then you look. It's right. got to start with you. People yeah. say, Charles, my pet peeve. I deserve to be treated better. No. Yeah. Right. You choose to be treated better. You, yeah. Choose. Yeah. Yeah. You choose. And so, but when you say choose to be treated better, like somebody's hearing this and they're going, wait a minute. How do you choose what, to be treated better? What does that look like? Okay. For instance, like I got a buddy who never calls me back. I, mm -hmm. I deserve for him to call me back. No, you don't stop calling him. I choose to stop putting myself right. in that position. Yeah. Or that's true. Okay. Or I got a, a coworker who's a jerk. Yeah. I choose not to go to lunch with him or her. Yeah. Got you. Got you. Cause yeah, deserve man. means, you know, deserve to, I deserve to be treated. Bad. I hate that. The flip side is, do I deserve to be treated bad? Mm, okay. That's what people don't look at. Right. Right. I heard yeah. psychologists, they say people, you need to, you deserve to be treated better. Well, does that mean you, you what if you don't deserve it? Mm. No, yeah. you choose it. And Charles, you yeah. start on the inside and you go out. Right. right. Calmness for men, men that are calm can weather the hurricanes mm -hmm. have to go inside yeah. and look at the I hurricane. Mean. So you can't be in the hurricane. About, yep. Yeah. It sounds like this. Uh, what do they call it? This neuro linguistic you know, training, this yeah. kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah that's really what yeah, it's yeah. just changing, changing the way you think about things and that changes your mm -hmm. behavior nope. and then right. it changes the responses around you. So, okay. So healthy self-esteem uh, is based on assessing ourselves accurately, right? Would you say? Correct. And, and then the big part of it all also is accepting who we are. Correct. Then right. number two, mm -hmm. then I can go outside and listen to the feedback. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. And Charles, many times people say, well, they're really troubled because this person doesn't like me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I always ask them, do you like them? Mm. Do you like them? Yeah. Or do you just want their approval? Do you just want their approval? Yeah. Yeah. Charles, and today, that's a big question. I feel like that's huge. I feel like that's, that's Instagram. Huge. Charles, that's, that's Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Charles. Right. We're talking okay. Instagram. I hear you. I mean, I hear you. likes, and how many likes did you get? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's te yeah. terrible. Right. No. So to, to, to really round yeah. off, you know, people with poor self-esteem, they're looking outside externally for that validation. And now validation is, is, is still kind of normal. We, it, that's not something it's that's on. No, no. It's the right. order of it. It's the order of it. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I'm so talking about the order. We have to validate ourselves first. The healthy self-esteem is when we're going to validate ourselves first. And a poor... Correct self-esteem is when we're looking for others to validate us first right externally right. okay and that's Got it. and that Got becomes it. codependence codependent yeah. is 
I need you to love me so I can mm-hmm. love myself. So I can love myself. Right. Yeah. I always tell people, don't outsource your self-esteem. Got it. Got don't it. outsource I it. Think that's don't word. send well, it to someone else. <laughs> there we go. Okay. There you go, guys. Again, uh, just stay with us. You are listening oh, to man, Dr. Hang Poulter. in there, man. We're on it. We're on it. <laughs> We're Come on, listening man. to Dr. Poulter, the author of The oh, Shame yeah. Factor. We're feeling uh, it. Just a, a great thing. And uh, guys, just sit tight. We'll be right back after the break. So, guys, we are continuing to talk about self-esteem. And a lot of people may ask the question, well, where does, where does self-esteem come from? Because I'll, I'll never forget one time, Doc, I was uh, running a group yeah. for some teenagers, AOD group for some teenagers. For some of you guys, you don't know what AOD means, alcohol and other drugs. Okay, so yeah, cool. Um, I know we can <laughs> kind of get into these like acronyms and people are like, what are you talking about? But I was running this group yeah, yeah. and we started talking about self-esteem and this, this kid went like, Mr. Charles, what's that? <laughs> right. And I was like, oh, shoot. OK, you know, so yeah. forget about the, the, the drug stuff for a minute. Let's just talk about self-esteem. So where does self-esteem come from, Doc? Charles, this is where psychology started. Um, next to the Bible, the greatest selling book was Dr. Spock's book on how to parent your kids released mm. in 1947. I wow. Like 200 million copies. Is that right? And I feel yeah. bad because I don't have that book, Doc. So ooh, uh, I'm so sorry. Burning, yeah. <laughs> I bought it. I bought it when I did the shame factors. I felt negligent. Oh, <laughs> I felt, I see. You know, got you. Yeah. yeah. It, it, your child's self-esteem starts mm. with how you were spoken to. Okay. Got and it. many men have buried how they were spoken to they bury it because it was painful because it was painful yes and that's what can be healed your self-esteem it's either a broken bone or it's a working muscle okay it's either or it's not both Mm, wow oh man it's not that's heavy you got me thinking about that now. I'm like, hold up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, is my muscle okay or is it broken? Like, what about me? So Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Did I just strain it? Yeah. No, Charles, that when I wrote that, she, all the way, Charles, I've been doing it forever. Mm-hmm. How? Because the way you were spoken to is how you speak to yourself. Yeah, right. People say, change your dialogue. Change your inner dialogue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but which, what was the first dialogue you heard? What was the first dialogue? Yeah. Yeah. What do you go back to? Like that computer? What is it? What's the reboot to? What's the reset See, to? Right. At age five, Charles, Dr. Mm-hmm. Spock, the guru, said kids either feel competent mm-hmm. or inferior. I see. OK. And that's the road. Now, you can heal if you feel inferior. That's all of this is amenable to change and healing. Yeah. Now, I feeling that. competent means I can I can learn as I go. Mm-hmm. That's healthy self-esteem. Okay. I don't need to know everything. I'll just land on my feet. Yeah. It's not yeah. arrogance. I'll just, fi- you know, I'm, I'm going to figure this out. Like, if I got okay. a problem, I'll call you, Charles. Like, I'll, I'll build my team. Right. Unhealthy is I feel like a loser and I can't tell anybody. Got you. And I cover got it you. up. Yeah. And that's, that's where addiction thrives. Yeah. Absolutely. It's like a, Man, that's, it's like that's an where mine, that's, that's, ditto. Same that with was all, mine. Ditto. Uh, Man, Charles, all day long. That, <laughs> all day long. And anybody who tells me, well, I don't have any addictions, but they're codependent. No, you have an emotional addiction. You have an they, emotional addiction. Oh, That's yeah. That's right. Yeah. Don't mm-hmm. think you um, skip the graveyard. You need to walk through it. Right. Yeah, no doubt. So let's let's kind of run yeah. down some of these bullet yeah. points those. Yeah. Uh, uh, for, for men out there who are listening to us, watching us talk about self-esteem. So we know that it comes from childhood, right? Um, right. Our environment, comes- right? Um, and what parents spoke to you about it. Yes. So um, what contributes to healthy self-esteem as a child? Things like uh, being listened to, right? Uh, being listened heard. to. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Being yeah. hurt. How about another one, Charles, being understood. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to go with that. Understood. Yeah. And safety, feeling okay. safe mm-hmm. emotionally, not just yeah. physically, but emotionally. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, another piece of it is mastery. Learning how what do you, they call it the fu- reading, writing, arithmetic, mm-hmm. problem solving. You know, got it. Okay, yeah, like yeah. Absolutely. Kid down the street ha- hates me, but you kind of figure out how to work with them. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. self esteem. That builds self esteem. See, so one of the things that I I, I think about too, uh, and I'll I'll, I'll add it is um, getting the appropriate amount of attention and affection. Right. That, that's that's part of building that healthy self esteem. Yeah. That's it, Charles. That's underrated. 
Yeah, it's underrated, especially yeah. for men, right? Very underrated for men. For oh, men totally. yeah. <laughs> hey, I've met guys that are addicted to pornography, and I go back mm. to who didn't hug you growing up. Mm. Yeah, and I and we're not missing much. Mm-hmm. I don't right. get too many blank stares. Yeah, no, I, I, I nobody hugged me. Right, and they're craving gotcha. that affection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're a lot of people. Effect. You know, I, I hear people talk about it a lot of times that they ask me questions about addiction and, and uh, even if it's porno- pornography, right? I'll tell people, you know, that even that's an addiction of loneliness. And they're like, well, but you're on a computer or on your smartphone. And, dude, it's still an addiction of it's loneliness, lonely. trust me. Man, and I, also, I also tell people when you have a, an addict there, you know, some people use drugs with their friends, but you will really, mm-hmm. really, you'll, you'll, if you notice, they don't really need their friends to use the drug. They're going to get the drug and get rid of the friend. They're they're okay. You know, if you say that you don't want to be around an addict, that addict is going to take their drug of choice, go around the corner in an alleyway, and they're still going to use. Okay. They're not going to not use because you're not their friend. It's a, it's a loneliness thing that's happening there that they're trying to address. Um, Childhood experiences that lead to low self-esteem. You know, we talked about being harshly criticized and then the other, one of the big ones out there, Doc, being physically, emotionally, or sexually abused. Yeah, Charles, right. I don't even want to skip over that. I, mm-hmm. It's a given, and I forget to mention that because yeah. it's so horrific. Yeah. And the yeah. one that – another with that, it's underrated, Charles. I put those mm-hmm. as number one. Number two, mm-hmm. close second, is how you speak to yourself now. Got you. How do you speak yeah. to yourself? I have kids at eight, nine years old in my practice that call themselves mm-hmm. stupid. Who said yeah. you're stupid? Right. I hear you. I hear you. And you and back that, it up and they're like, yep. you know, that, you know. That's, a, that's interesting because the other bullet point, the last one that we were going to make is, is, uh, is that, um, you know, these messages that are received, right? Somebody tells a child, oh, you're stupid one time. And guess what the kid will start to do, right? And this could come from teachers from peers, coaches. Um, um, and this, this is especially important for guys because I mean, so many of us played sports, right? Oh, uh, you read my dude, mind. Dudes, you're not expected Brutal. to lose. You're not expected to strike out. You're not expected to miss the free throw. You're not to really come on. You know, I listened, I watch ESPN today even, and sometimes I have to turn it off, Doc, because I'm listening to the commentators and how they speak about some of the athletes, and I'm going, what in the world? World. Charles, <laughs> these guys are human. They're human. They're I'm human. sorry. Yeah. Charles, if you hit, if you strike out seven times and hit three of them, you're in the Hall of Fame. You're in the Hall of Fame for that. Yeah. Like, really? Yeah, come, come on. on man. Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, all day long. So listen, guys, we are here for it. We're talking about self-esteem. Yes. Stick with us. We'll be all right day. back. Okay. Hey, guys, we're talking about self-esteem. And today we're talking to Dr. Poulter, the author of The Shame Factor, about the inner voice. Doc, what Oof. does the inner voice say? Like, like, what is this inner voice? Hey, Charles, guys joke when I say that. Oh, I'm not schizophrenic. No, you really are because you don't believe it. Mm. That There is an inner dialogue we all carry, Charles. Yeah. And that inner dialogue shapes how we function present day in I our see. marriages, relationships, and it really plays out in our parenting and our careers. Gotcha. The big three. Mm-hmm. Wow. Your romantic relationships, your kids, yep. mm-hmm. and your career. And career covers money, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to put career money in the same. Those three. Yeah. And mm-hmm. many men who felt like they were stupid growing up because they got yeah. a C in reading. Mm-hmm. Or they're just an average student because they had dyslexia, but it was never diagnosed. Right, right. Or ADHD, dyslexia. or ADHD, oh my God. and it was A- never ADHD. diagnosed. Right, never diagnosed. <laughs> or right. or dad was an alcoholic at home, and they were freaked out. Yeah, and they yeah, couldn't concentrate. Okay. okay. Yep. So now let's fast forward twenty years. Mm-hmm. Now they're working someplace, and they got promoted, and they think, "Oh shit, they're gonna find out I'm not good enough." Right. Yeah, there yeah. is the imposter syndrome. Right, right, right. So before we go to the imposter syndrome, yeah, sorry, though, sorry, right? sorry, Charles, because <laughs> we yeah. got him, we got <laughs> him in jumping there. in, man. I just want to want to mention because I can hear Doctor Dyer's voice in my head saying, "Hey, don't forget about the positive thing, right?" So let's talk about this yes. real quick. Yes. Healthy self esteem. The messages of the inner voice are usually accepting and reassuring. Okay, 
that yes. that's really really important to point out when you know when you talk about healthy self esteem it's accepting and reassuring yes. okay sure. accepting um, charles is room for not being perfect right that's right dr dyer that was one of his gifts mm -hmm. perfection is self loathing yeah. right here i want to point out something because a lot of yeah. a lot of our our, our female listeners and and viewers uh, we'll talk about guys not being able to apologize. And if you're a man out there who's watching, who's listening, and you have trouble apologizing, you probably also have, I won't say trouble, you may want to take a look at your self-esteem and your valuation of it, right? Because in your, it's, it's, it, we're not even talking about whether you did something wrong or right. Charles, you know, you know, you know, Charles, you know, if you've done something you're... wrong, but but the thing is, even if you know you've done something wrong, your mouth won't let you acknowledge that you're not perfect to someone. Because, Charles, that low self-esteem is about winning and losing. Yeah. Yeah. And, Charles, there's an old saying, you can be right or be in a relationship. And if you're in a relationship, <laughs> you're always right. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. So, no, Charles. Yeah. If yeah. you can. Mm hmm can't apologize is because you're still stuck on you're not good enough right I and you. if you apologize you're not good enough yes you are right. you're more than good enough you're courageous yeah right yeah absolutely absolutely so let's talk about because you mentioned the imposter syndrome and there yes. are three faces of, of low self-esteem um and the first one uh being the imposter syndrome feeling like we're not good enough right so somebody could you know, graduate with a PhD, have, uh, you know, uh, an ample <laughs> six stuff. figure, yep. an ample six figure job, be a millionaire, but still not feel like they're good enough. Is that what we're talking about? That is exactly what we're talking about. Yep. There again is taping the sandwich to the arm and you're starving. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's not going to feed you. Yeah. Somebody calls you for an interview and you, you, you took the time out, you filled out the application, you went through everything and they call you for the interview and then you just don't show up or better yet, they hire you after interviewing you and you don't show up and you don't even have a better option. You just said, you know what? No, nah, I Can't don't do want it. it. Can't uh, do it. No, don't make an ex Ooh. Charles. I hear this all the time in my 20 somethings. No, yeah. it's, it, I don't want to do, deal with the traffic. There is no traffic. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. See, that, the their, mind, their mind is yeah. messing with uh, them, right? Dude, there's a uh -huh. shutdown, and you're the only one on the road right now. Yeah. Charles, it's all you. about the wounded boy inside. Yeah. Mm, and the imposter is, I'm going to be revealed. Right. And I wow. say, go expose him and heal him. Mm. Yeah. Shame, and now they can't handle mm -hmm. exposure. Imposter syndrome too, doc, if I'm not mistaken, can it kind of lead to this, this, this swinging pendulum between like perfection, you know, you go back and forth, yes. perfectionism on one yeah. side, burnout on the other side. You it's know, bipolar. Just, mm, and I'm using the word, okay. uh, it's a bipolar mood swing. You're not bipolar, yeah. but mm -hmm. you feel it. But you feel it. You're Got either it. best yeah. or you're out of work. I understand. There's no okay. in between. Yeah. And your coworkers so what, hate you. Yeah. Got it. What about the rebel? Talk talk to us about the rebel a little bit. It's the imposter syndrome with Bob Wire around it. Okay. The rebel is protecting that wounded child that's not good enough. Mm, so I'll be a okay. badass. So when anyone gets near me, I'll knock their head off. Got it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Other people's opinions don't matter at all. It's just like, just, just fuck the whole world, yeah. everything. Yeah, it, it, which okay. is really not true. I've never mm -hmm. met a badass who deep down wants, who doesn't want to be loved and approved of. And yeah. was never hugged. He was yeah. never hugged as a child. Uh -huh. I'm telling you right now, he got beaten as a child. And so he's probably an angry dude then, huh? He's angry. And that's all that rage <laughs> stuff we talk about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, Charles, the rebel mm -hmm. is a boy mm -hmm. in a man's body. I see. Yeah. I said it. Yeah. Yeah, just always looking to break rules, blaming yep. others excessively. It has nothing you know, with age. Opposing authority. Just hey, Charles, how about the thieves on Wall Street who steal billions of dollars from a retirement fund? Those mm. are bad boys, not yeah. bad men. Those are right. bad, bad boys. boys. Bad boys. And what about what about the victim as the third one, Doc? That I want you to take care of my life. I want you to rescue me. Okay, they're sitting on the side of the road waiting for AAA to save them. 
metaphorically. They're using a lot of self-pity and everything. Yep. Blame. Mm -hmm. No responsibility. Charles, they Mm -hmm. have blame down to a PhD level. Yeah. Wow. My dad did this. And Charles, I got I got guys in their 50s and 60s who are still blaming their parents. I'm like, dude, your parents passed away. Yeah. This is your story. Yeah. You gotta write the story. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Definitely interesting, guys. So we want to run down these three again. So you're familiar with the three yeah. faces of low self-esteem. The imposter, I'm not good enough. The rebel, okay. The rebel don't is get near uh, me. um don't get near me, okay. And the victim, uh, the victim just acts helpless, is always looking for somebody to save them, uh, and yes. uh and rescue them. So just just keep in mind that that's kind of what develops when we're talking about low self-esteem. Just stay with us, guys. We'll be right back after the break. Doc, what are some of the uh, the consequences of, of low self-esteem that you, that you see out there? Charles, anxiety. Anxiety is you're always worried about impending doom. Yeah. Something bad's going to happen. Mm, and Sunday okay. night is the worst time of the week for that person. Got you. Okay. Because they got to look, that something bad's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. That, the whole, other side, that whole week is ahead of them, and they're just like, oh, no. Oh, no, I can't do this. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why Sunday afternoon is such a high rate for domestic violence and suicide. Got it. Okay. Huge spike on yeah. the chart, Charles, because Sunday. of that. Yeah. Sunday afternoon, mm-hmm. starting about 4 o'clock to midnight. Bad yeah. times. Right, but, right. And so we, number two, we, yeah. Mm-hmm. You said anxiety. Uh, so yes. What about what about uh, you know loneliness? Obviously, would be one, right? Oh yeah, because you don't think you're lovable, mm-hmm. so you keep people away. You know, a lot of women say this guy won't won't uh, he won't commit. I go, mm-hmm. nothing. He doesn't like you. He doesn't like himself. Got it. Okay. He doesn't want yeah. you to see that, so he right. keeps you away, and they date okay. for five years. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, because he's struggling the whole time. He's oh, yeah. Struggling he's keeping the whole her. He time. doesn't want, he never lets me come over to his house or his apartment. Mm-hmm. I go, because he doesn't want you to see it. Yeah. See him. Got it. Low Got self esteem. You don't want to be seen, Charles. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Uh-huh. And they also have a lot of health problems. A lot of health problems. Because mm. it'll, it'll spill into your body. I mean, yeah. weight, overweight. Mm-hmm. I, I'm talking just chronic fatigue. Chronic right. fatigue many times, I'm just not happy with myself. It's okay. not your job. It's not your family. It's not your kids. Right. It's you. Just not happy. Just not happy with Not with happy, me. man. Happy with yeah. yeah. And it just drains you. Then there's so many people who will stop right there, Doc, and they'll say, oh, I'm just tired and I don't know why I'm tired. I'm tired and I don't know why I'm tired. But if they go a little further... As you, down. as you open it up, yeah, yeah. Now you you start talking about how they view themselves, right? Yeah. Wow. The question was, I always ask, what are you not doing? Mm-hmm. What are you not doing? Yeah. You're, you're not doing stuff that recharges you. And it's not okay. leaving your marriage. Okay, I tell them that's bullshit. Right. Come on, come yeah, on. Yeah, give yeah. me a better answer. That's not, what, that's answer. not what you have to do. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Dude, that's 10 steps away, okay? Let's get yeah. the first nine covered. Then we'll talk about 10. Uh-huh, uh-huh. what are you not doing you know are you over drinking mm-hmm. overeating yeah uh not exercising not talking to your buddies mm-hmm. who love you you're not reaching yeah. out to people reach, you know what i mean we're talking right. basic stuff yeah yeah yeah. absolutely so what about um the, the self-esteem i i would think it would impact job performance uh Ugh. academic performance right right on job performance charles absenteeism not meeting deadlines right. uh-huh Consciously, unconsciously sabotaging yourself. Yeah. Whew. I see it Man, all the time, Charles. <laughs> Ooh, we got a lot of cover that. In school, I, I just don't show up for class. Mm. I got a guy that's in medical school who's in finals right now, Charles. Uh-huh. I'm talking to him every day to help him get through, make sure he gets up and does his work. Right. Wow. That's mm-hmm. healing his self-esteem. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's in medical school. Right. I mean, he's right at right at the end. He's right there. Right there. And, and he's it's blown it up. A... Mm-hmm. He's Got blown you. the bridge up. Got you. Okay. And okay. he gets mad at me because I keep mm-hmm. calling him out saying stay present and do the work. Yeah. 
And then one of the things that I think about with low self-esteem, Doc, you know, uh, again, as always a mm-hmm. recovering, always as a recovering addict, right? You know, some people say, oh, well, don't call yourself an addict. You look, whatever works for you, this is what works for me. And I know why I do it. Um, mm-hmm. Low self-esteem and drug and alcohol abuse. There's a connection there. Right. It's the same coin, different sides. Yeah. Charles, we're all in recovery. Right. I've never met an addict, myself included, who has high self-esteem. Right. Yeah. They're not compatible. That. They're not compatible. Yeah. And you're, you're, the biggest part of recovery is emotional recovery. Mm. Get off the drug in 30 days. Fantastic. Right. Yeah, yeah. People do that. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's but the, the next 30 stuff. years? <laughs> yeah. It's the next 30 years. I mean, uh, yeah. Dr. Wilson, Bill, I call him doctor because he deserves that. Right, uh, right. That 12 steps isn't for 12 weeks. That's right. It's for life. That's for, for life. 12, yeah. 12 lifetimes if needed, Man. Charles. You see? Yeah, absolutely. 12 lifetimes. You're right. You're right. Listen, guys, you all have been talking with myself um, and Dr. Steve Poulter, the author of The Shame Factor. Thanks, we guys. We will continue to talk about uh, self-esteem. Just stay with us. Um, after the break, we'll get into the three steps to improve it. Uh, right after this, sit tight. Hey guys, we're back at the Barbershop Group Podcast. Uh, we are interviewing Dr. Steve Poulter about uh, three ways to improve self-esteem. So, so Doc, what, what, if you could list three things that guys can start to do today to, to, to address, you know, or improve low self-esteem, what would those three things be? Okay, first I want to say, Charles, in all this talk, none of this includes blaming. Okay. No blaming. Right. Not blaming your parents. Mm -hmm. Off the table. If we're going to really deal with our core self, we got to own it. Put it on the table. Yeah. And it, Charles, in the first sense, what some of the first memories of yourself, how you felt about yourself, Mm -hmm. ages five or six? Did you feel like you were capable? Mm -hmm. Did you feel shamed in school? You couldn't read? That's the original dialogue. Mm -hmm. That's the original one. And what did your parents say to you about it? Yeah. That's the original. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. No blame. No Number blame. two. Yeah. Okay. Acceptance that you're not perfect. Mm-hmm. It sounds obvious until you do it. Yeah. <laughs> Charles, why in all the programs do the, we all acknowledge that we're not perfect? Right. I'm an alcoholic. Right, yeah. I'm a codependent. Right. Because that opens up that we're teachable. Yeah. This is true. And number two is that you're not perfect. Yeah. And that gets you off the win lose um, paradigm. What Mm -hmm. Sports Center just exploits. Yeah. Right. Some guy makes a bad play and he gets death threats. (laughs) (laughs) Seriously, man. (laughs) Right. This is this is is true. This is real, man. This is I mean that poor guy a few weeks back in Cleveland, yeah, from Asia, the whole country disowned him. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Charles. When I don't have to be perfect, mm-hmm. I can embrace everybody. I understand. Most important, and if I embrace myself, mm-hmm. there's a lot of room for my family and loved ones. That's right. Yeah. And number very, three, very Charles, mm-hmm. build a network, a structure. Like mm-hmm. you've got the my the barbershop group. There's a group of guys in there that support us. Right. We support them. Yeah. That's where men have. We got to get to that. And it's not our yeah. drinking buddies. It's our supportive buddies. The supportive. Yes. It's the supportive guys. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And that means those three getting, steps get, get used to, real. To, 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 to getting help. So just to, to kind of recap yeah, for you yeah. guys, you know, uh, three things that you can do today to improve self-esteem, uh, you know, refute the inner critic, that inner critic, yeah. those stories Call that, out that you received as a young child that just kind of stuck with you and you repeat them over and over again, or even if they didn't come from young adult, you know, young, you know, uh, being a child, what if it was something that happened a little later on in life and it was traumatic for or you and then you how, replay How about it. a coach? Yeah. How about yeah. a coach? Yeah. Any of that. You. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Refute those things, Re, you yeah. know, create a rebuttal so you can change the story and the narrative for that. Beautiful. Number two, um practicing self-compassion as as dr dr steve alluded to yeah okay go charles 
Number three. No perfection. No perfection. No, per, no perfection. Yeah, that's what's important when Sorry. we talk about self-compassion is no yes. perfection. Okay. Because that that opens you up to so many other possibilities at that point. And then the last thing is be willing to get help from others. Right. So ask for support, get help from teachers and others, talk to a therapist. Uh, support networks and things like that. These are the three things that you can do to start building your self-esteem back up, to start exercising that muscle. Okay, guys. Um, so right listen, you have heard me mention that it's important that you purchase the Shame Factor uh, book. Thank you. Okay. Uh, We're in this together. That's yep. included in the show notes. You will also be able to purchase uh, a self-esteem um a self-esteem book that I personally, I really enjoy it. It's called A Proven Program of Cognitive Techniques for Assessing, Improving, and Maintaining Your Self-Esteem. There's also a link to that book in the show notes as well. Listen, guys, it's Friday. The pandemic is still here. We know some of you guys are being vaccinated. Others are not. Uh, some of you are wearing masks. Others are not. Do what it is that you need to do to be <laughs> safe, because I'm pretty sure that you guys want to get back to, to normal. OK, uh, some call outs for you all. Listen, make sure yeah. that you're following us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. Yeah. If you don't, you'll mm -hmm. miss some of the articles. Also, yeah. you can go to our new website now, tbgmen.com and subscribe to it so that you'll, you won't miss any podcasts, videos, audios or articles that will be posted there. You'll be able to see everything on the new website. Uh, and you can also DM us if you would like to be added to our private WhatsApp whatsapp group for men it's a great place to just come in and chop it up and talk to folks who are there uh but guys until next time uh be well we'll talk to you soon thank you charles take care guys